Hi, it's me again, JP. So, we're done with lesson 1 and lesson 2. And we have the walls, doors, and windows. So, you have learned guidelines, rectangle, push and pull, and as well as group components and all that. So, now we will go into details. Now that we have the walls and the, the window and door, what's next so we'll do what we will do what is inside so to do that we'll um, let's go back to our inspiration photo which is this one so I'll just drag it in here and this is where we started okay so we will do this vanity the counter um, the tiles are here and later on I will show you how to put in the the tap uh, this mirrors lighting fixtures even the um, lavatories so so I put this inspiration photo in so it's easier for us to see how about let's um, and then let's unhide the plan. Remember, the, uh, the the plan is is still in there. It's just that we hid it on our previous um, lesson. So let's unhide it. Okay, there you go. So that's the plan. Let's copy or, or let's just see. Okay, there. As per the measurement on the plan, it says 650. That's the depth of the vanity. So this is what we will do now. Lesson 3 is about creating detailed objects. So we don't. it's up to you if you want to have a specific measurement, which is 650. So if you want to do that, just click on T and then we drag it again for to get the guideline and then type in 650 on your keyboard and then hit enter so there it is or you don't you don't have to do that since you already have the plan here you can just follow that there just eyeball it there or as I've mentioned, as I've mentioned, you can do it by putting a guideline. So that's T for the tape measure, and then type in six hundred fifty. Okay, there you go. So remember, our walls is uh, doors and windows are already grouped. So even if we put rectangle here, it will not be included in in the walls group. But if you haven't grouped it yet, or you have ungrouped the uh, the the walls, then go ahead and select the walls, right click and group. But if it's already grouped, just this one, no need to do that again. So now that we have it here, let's unhide the wall. I mean, let's hide the wall, and then let's focus on this vanity. Okay, so I put this photo here. So while we are doing this, where we all do, we are. Yeah. So I put this photo here so we can see our inspiration photo while we are doing the vanity. Okay, so your vanity height could either be 800 or 760 or 850 but the standard is about 800 to 850 height so we will use that um so now that we have this rectangle here select that click on p for push and pull which is this Okay, now that that's changed, push it up. Let's um, let's decide on let's say eight hundred for height. Okay, so that's this part, just the gray part. Okay, we're doing the gray part first. 
so this vanity has a, uh, a recess here okay so for us to do that let's copy this one so to copy click on the line click on M and then control now that it's a, it's a working command to copy copy it for a hundred push I mean not copy and then slide your um, the new line upwards and then type in 100 enter okay so that's it you will see that this part and this part is already divided remember there's a recess here okay that part goes in so we will use push and pull P push for 50 okay that's it so it really depends on how you interpret the object for me you can do it as one whole piece or for me to, uh, for me to be to make it easier because I want to do one piece and then close it as a group and then do another piece and then close that as a group these doors are repeating objects right so they're exactly the same it's just that um, one is facing the other side one opens the other side so it's best if we do a component for component for this and then there are four drawers as well that are exactly the same so it's also best to do a component for that so if there are repetitive objects what I usually do is do this main object first for the vanity make it into a group and then add in the details this part the doors and as well as the drawers we already push this to a 50 now let's add this part so to add that let's assume that that size about 150 so guidelines again or use T click here drag and then type in 150 okay now that you have the guideline there let's go back to the picture and see okay this part is 150 this may be probably 40 from this side okay so let's create another guideline so that's T click from here move to the left and then type in 40 okay now that we have that there are two guidelines now we can trace the object now there's a sort of a trapezoid thing there so let's click on here to get one corner and then click here and then click here here and here there that's the trapezoid part there so now that we have that let's push that for if we push this for 50 this part to this part is 50 now the picture shows as that it's not flashed to the door but it's also on top of this main foot area okay so that means this has this one has a thickness but it's not as thick as 50 so let's say let's put it to 40 40 okay oh maybe that's too much let's do it 35 push 35 okay so again i did that by doing click on p or push and pull selecting this area which is what we just created the trapezoid thing and then push it outwards for 35 okay now that we have that okay select 
this area again. Remember, we already grouped this counter. The main counter is already grouped. So if we group this one, it will not it will not touch the original group. So again, select this, right um, right click, and then make group. But then again, let's look back to the picture. There are two of those things. So if it is a repetitive object, it's better if to make it into a component. So we made it into a group. Now let's make it into a component by clicking on, I mean right click and then make component. Now that it's a component, let's copy it by clicking on, by um, typing M and then control. Select wherever and then push it here. Okay, we haven't used this tool yet. So what we were going to do now is use rotate. This part, that angle part is to the right side, but of course, it's a mirror to the other side. So this angled part should be facing here. So for us to do a, for, for us to do it, we have to flip this trapezoid foot. So to flip that, click on this, rotate, or Q on your keyboard. So I'll hit on Q, and it will show this. If it's um, on the blue axis, it will show this. If it's here, that's green axis and then red axis. So now we want to flip it facing to the other side. So click one corner and then if we move this around, it will rotate. But it's not yet um, getting the object that we want. So for us to do that, Click again to one side, which is usually here, where you want, where where your reference should be, because this is what you want to turn to the other side, right? So click again here. It doesn't matter if it's not exact. Just click there. Now, when you rotate your your um, mouse, now that goes with you, but is aligned right at the center of that origin see this part that's the center so now you can rotate it and as as the same way as everything else in sketchup you can put an exact measurement to that by typing in how many degrees you want it to rotate so you want it to face to the other side so that's 180 degrees so from here i'll do it again just for you to see okay so now there's no command for us to rotate you have to select what you want to rotate by using this arrow okay and then type in on your keyboard or click using your mouse this part which is rotate or just type in q as for queen so that's q click q on your keyboard or type on your keyboard and then click your reference point where you want it to rotate what what's the axis that you want it to rotate so this will be that that point and then another click to one side of the reference which is this side because you want to turn this side around so click again now drag it rotate it there it's rotating on that axis Rotate and then type in on your keyboard 180 and then hit enter. There you go. So that's an exact 180 degrees from the original. Remember, this is a component. Okay, so if we do if we change this one, this will automatically be changed as well. So let's place that first to where it should be by moving. Click on M or type in M on your keyboard and then select this corner and then move it here to this corner. Okay, now we have it both. Okay, so for us to easily see the changes in that, let's change the materials. If you don't have this on your screen, you can open it in window default tray and then materials just check there okay if you have it then just click either um, here and then select colors 
but I think there are there's already um pre-selected gray here, so we can use that already. How about um hmm. How about this gray? Okay. There is um this this is the home area for the materials. And this one is automatically populated because of the grill that is already here when we first opened lesson uh when when we first opened SketchUp, there's a grill here, right? So that's why this color is called Lisan Hammer and Lisan Metal because it came from that model. So how about let's use this one and then two to change the material for this leg. So just select the color that you like. So I'm choosing this. Once that's selected, this will be ch the the material will be changed here. So you know it's already selected. And then after it's selected, just click on where you want it to color. Okay, so now there. This one did it change color. Why? Because we did it outside. We did not edit component. So if we change it in color, but we did not click on edit component, this one will also not be changed. So to show you that, I will just undo that and then right click here and edit component. Okay, when I click on edit component, now this is being um, read by SketchUp as a component. Now let's change the color. So we can also use B, type B on your keyboard to use the material. So B and then click there. Hmm. It did change. Wait. Let's try it again. Edit component. Oh, because this is the other side. Remember we flipped it up? So this is the back of this one. So I'll do it again. And how about let's color this part B. Let's see if this part changes. There you go. Now that change. So let's change this, change this. Okay, and just for you guys to see, I'll move that again. And then edit component. B, B. There you go. So there, you can see that is already changed. So let's move it back. Okay, so we have the main counter. And then the the leg or the foot foot detail there. Next is to do this uh, doors and drawers. Okay. Mm hmm. Let's delete the guides first. So for us to get the proportion for these doors and the uh, drawers, it's best for us to get the midpoint first. So for us to get the midpoint, we will use this tool again, which is tape measure tool. So click on T, select here, and then drag it where you think is the midpoint. Now for you to be sure it's the midpoint, okay, so move to the lines there, see? It snaps right there. And then it turns into that symbol. So click again. To put that guideline now that we have that guideline let's assume this drawers is about 300 in width okay so 300 divided by 2 is 150 so from this midpoint let's use uh, this create another guideline so that's T select that and then drag to the right type in 150 and then click again from the midpoint drag to the left and then type in 150 okay do you think no looks like our drawers are a bit shorter so let's undo and try it again how about we use 200 so this time t drag to the right type in 200 t try, um drag to the left type in 200 okay Looks like that's about right. Okay, now that we have this assigned for our drawers, we need to get the midpoint for this side. 
because we want to do the doors for uh, this cabinets first okay so for me to get the midpoint for that I can draw a line here from this guideline to the left okay now that, that there's a new line there that line will show another midpoint so for us to get the midpoint for that let's click on T and then drag it and find the midpoint okay now that we got the midpoint for this door we can do this doors okay so for us to do the doors for the cabinet click on this one or type in R on your keyboard okay so this is the midpoint from the midpoint drag it to the left we're creating the rectangle now okay you may not see it but there's a new rectangle there okay this is different because we already grouped it then there's another rectangle there so let's assume thickness for that door is 30 so let's push this rectangle 30 so type in P on your keyboard or select here so P and then push let's type in 30 okay that's the door now this part is recessed there's sort of a molding there okay there's one way to do it easily which is to use the follow me tool or um, since you guys are in basic so we'll just do the push and pull and put that border there using push and pull only okay so now that we have this rectangle let's hide this just to show you that's the rectangle this is the line that we use just to get the midpoint we can delete that okay so let's unhide that I mean let's unhide the cabinet that's the uh, previous walls okay now that we have the cabinet this is the rectangle okay mm -hmm. so this part has sort of a trim maybe that's about 80 so for us to get that let's use offset tool which is this okay you can click it here for the offset or type F on your keyboard and then click in the area of the rectangle and then from click somewhere and then drag it inside okay so let's assume that's 80 okay just about right and of course this is this part the recess part so let's assume that is about 15 so from this we will offset again so F offset outside 15 okay mm -hmm. that's correct now these are separated areas but they are still flushed together you want to see the recess part okay so let's push click on P or type in P and then push 10 or let's say yes 15 okay there you go now we have 15 so that's the door you have the door now let's make this into a group first make into group right click and then make group and then let's color it with same color as this one so type in B on your keyboard while this is still selected click there okay now that it's colored the same way we will make it into a component so right click and make component okay now let's copy this to have four doors so to copy type in M and then control and then click here at the corner of that door and then drag click again and then there and then 
that I on control again you can see that the move tool is just move now so if we move this again it's not a copy so to copy click on control again and then copy that again then move it here and then let's copy one more so M control and then click again on that corner and then move it here okay now we have the doors okay now that we have the doors next is the drawers okay now for us to get let's look at the photo again there are four drawers right one two three four so let's create one more line from this side to this side why did i do that so that i can get the midpoint for the height okay and there you go now we got the midpoint okay now let's create another line to that part so that we can get the midpoint here okay so click on t again to get the guidelines and then look for the midpoint there you go so that's 175 so just drag another line to make another guideline there t then drag it down 175 now now that you know that distance from this one to this one is 175 so let's erase those lines now that we have these guidelines let's create the rectangle create the rectangle by clicking on this corner and then dragging that to the other corner there okay that's this tool or type r on your keyboard okay now that we have that rectangle see now let's push to the same width as the door so push p and then pull it there okay now that we have that let's go to let's go back to the picture again um this picture doesn't show much if this one has um, molding so let's just not put a molding there but for us to be able to see the distance from this door to this door there should be a gap on each side right now this rectangle is start is touching the other line for the other uh, for the door or the other rectangle so we don't want that you want it to have a gap so that when we render or i know we're not rendering yet but it's also best to do uh, the gap there to show the gap so you can see the difference from each component so for us to do that now that we have this rectangle done we can just offset so let's f on your keyboard or this okay so f and then click inside and then drag let's use maybe just 5 mm so click on um, type in 5 on your keyboard there now that's 5 okay so of course we want the gap so let's push that p push it back there okay now that's gone we have that gap in between now okay so this is the drawer let's make it into a group you can just double click until it got all that right click and then make group if you don't want to double click select it from left to right and that will make it into a group as well now that is group click on B to, to, um, to change the color or the material B okay and then select okay so for us to um, have all four drawers since we already have guidelines here uh, let's just copy that so for us to see a little bit better let's hide one door so click here and then hide right click and then hide okay so M control click this from this corner and then to this corner and then and then M control again from one corner to the next corner
one more M control there you go okay now let's double check if it's a component uh oh it's not a component so why do I have to make it into a component because I will put the the drawer handles later and I want it into a component now so that I will only do it once so let's undo that undo 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 now that we have have one again right click make into component okay again make sure it's already in a component before you copy it so to make it into a component right click make it into a component now that's already component it will show edit component okay so let's copy again m control m control again and control there you go okay now let's unhide the door you can do it by unhide edit and hide last okay now we have the door back okay. now let's do the handle which is this part okay so let's create the handle. We don't have to do it here. Um, let's just do it on the side. So from this, click on this one or C on your keyboard. Okay, so C. Let's make it into five. Five, type in five as its radius and then hit enter. Okay, and now let's push to 150. 150. Okay, now we already have that. So let's make that into a group first. Make group, right click, make group. And then I will copy that by clicking on M and then C, I mean control, and then drag it here and rotate. Because you want to put this um the the where, where you put the screws right so you have to put this part first so we copied that cylinder to here and then rotate so again to rotate either you use this or type in q on your keyboard so q and then select anywhere usually where you already have something there and then click another one uh, click another time on one side and then rotate 90 okay so that's 90 okay let's move it back here okay so let's just eyeball it if this is the height is 150 right so from the midpoint from this side from this part let's move up maybe 40 and then let's copy that M control another uh, 80 okay make it 85 so that's five more okay now let's make that because this is too long let's make that into a group select this select another this by clicking on shift and then select this so both now are selected right click make group okay now that's it's in a group we can rescale it to shorten it so again back into lesson one where we use um scale by rescaling the plan let's use scale now again by typing s on your keyboard or using this okay so s and then take this part okay s then this part the middle part and then push it back okay it doesn't have to be exact but you can see uh, the proportion of how you want it to be so let's say let's stop here okay there you go so how about let's use this first as a gold color this d3 okay so use this or click on b and then change that and then change that color again okay now that we have the gold handles let's put it together 
by clicking on shift and then selecting this um, cylinder as well select from left to right now it's both selected right click make group okay because there are a lot of handles we want to make it into a component so right click again make component okay now that you have the handle let's move it to the door move M and then let's go back to this door move click where the handle is and then move it here first just okay there let's just eyeball it there uh -huh. so the top of the handle here is also at the top of this um, molding so let's do that let's move the handle up to this point point so move okay now looking about looking back at the picture looks like our handle is a bit big so for us to um, to copy that original picture let's just rescale so s or this one from one corner drag it to where uh, looks like that should be enough okay now that we have this handle into this there are two ways of doing it either we put it right inside the component of the door which will change everything or we put we copy just the handle so uh, and then copy each handle to per door but i want it to just automatically update on the other doors so for me to do that let's view it here so that you have a better view so now that it's where we want it to be we will cut it and then paste it back but the time that we paste it should be inside the component so let's cut edit cut okay it's gone don't worry now let's go inside the component click on this door right click edit component okay now we're inside the component edit click on edit again here and click paste in place it will go back where it was before so paste in place there you go now the problem is all doors are exact right meaning this part should have the handle here hmm. I will just rotate it but if you you want to know the trick on how I do it um, I will release an advanced class for SketchUp and I will show you how but I will do it now and cut it later. Um, and again, if you want to know the trick, then um, enroll on my advanced class as well. So for now, instead of doing that, I can just move this, edit component, edit component, make a need, and then move this. Okay. I have another trick which is this we have to put handles here so edit paste and then let's just put the handle here and rotate because the handle on the drawer is that twice so Q or rotate and then click on one origin click on the other side and then rotate and then type in 90 okay Let's put it where it should be let's say it's there I'm just gonna eyeball it but if you want to measure then go ahead you should just get the, the midpoint by doing the guidelines and then going to the midpoint okay so the midpoint should be there okay is it now that's a bit floating you can see from this side that it's not touching the drawer so let's move that a little bit inside so let's click on M and then move say 15 okay let's do the same thing to put it in all the drawers 
that's edit cut okay click on the drawer uh, and then right click edit component now that we're already inside the component edit and then paste in place okay now the handles are already in there now we have the doors the drawers with all the handles foot and this part I will not change the color yet because uh, for lesson lesson four, I will show you that we have to put the lavatory here and we might have to cut it. But um, but we can also do a different lavatory whereas the lavatory is um, instead of recessed, it's just on top of the corner of the counter. Okay, so well, let's just group it all together first. Well, okay, maybe we could make it into the same material at first. So click on B on your keyboard and then there. Now it's all the same dark gray material. No, it's not the same dark gray material because I am selected on a different um, different material, which is my fault. So for us to get this exact color, click on this sample paint or eyedropper. Click here. Now that you got that. There you go. Now it's all the same color. Make group there. If it's a, if if this color is a little bit too dark, we can change it by going into edit and then change it here. So there are three sliders here that you can slide to make it a little bit lighter or change in color so there it's up to you to play around of the what what exact color you want so i think this is the best one so i'll use that okay let's delete guides edit delete guides now we have this vanity now then we have to put this um countertop with the um, what's this? I remember. I forgot what they call it. Backsplash. Okay. It's it's a tiny backsplash, or you can just call it a corner, or a molding. Okay. So now that we have that, it's all in one group. Let's uh, click on R again for rectangle, and then from this corner. To this corner let's create another rectangle okay now that we have that there's another rectangle there let's push it for 30 to give a thickness to the counter so P and then type in 30 hit enter okay now we have that we have this now we want to put this part Okay, the border or the, the tiny backsplash okay so for us to do what for us to do that click on F for offset F or this one okay so uh, select the inside and then drag again for another 30 three zero again and then hit enter okay now that you have that offset let's push back let's push it up for let's say 100 okay so push 100 enter but of course this one already only has this three sides this one is open so for us to delete that part just continue with the pull so p and then push it outwards okay offset limit is 30 so when you push it outwards to that side there you go now it's gone now we have the full vanity again let's make this part into a group make group and then let's put it together by clicking to both right click make group again okay now let's unhide to see it inside the walls unhide all there you go okay so that's lesson three we have the creating detailed objects Next up, 
next lesson would be the adding the mirrors and all the details like the bathtub the this part okay you might be scared because bathtub and a water closet that might be a little hard to create from scratch as a basic modeler because um, there's a lot of curves there is it's a very hard to create okay so but don't worry I'll tell you a trick that I always do I'll always use and everybody who use, uses catch up uses this as well so I will let you in the secret that's for our lesson four so again thank you this is JP and um, I'll see you again for lesson four